Hi, um, this is Marisol Medina, your instructor for Pro 109. In this video, I'm going to show you how to start the form validation for artifact number four. So as you can see, this is the original form that I provided through the assignment. And what needs to happen is if the user hits submit and we are not actually providing any data, we need to show error messages. And we are going to do that with JavaScript. So what do you need in order to follow me through this video? You need to have access um, to Valby College. You also need to have the description of the artifact number for the assignment. You need to have your JSP in or your own editor. And of course, the hosting site um, to upload your, your uh, web page. So let's start. I already have here the validate contact us form description and I provided all the rules that need to be followed on your JavaScript form. I also provided you with the source code, which is this one. And also I provided you with a page um, on a guideline at small form that you can um, create to understand a little bit how it works. So what we are going to do is just copy and paste the template for the form. So I'm going to copy this into my JSBin. So I'm going to have my code for my JSBin in here. And from the, um, uh, the um, gu guideline, I'm going to copy the JavaScript code that we're going to use and modify a little bit. So this is our JavaScript code. And I also provided in that guideline a CSS code for the error messages. So this is our CSS code. So let's start modifying first our HTML code. So every form needs to have different attributes. The first one that we need to provide is the action. What do we want to actually do once the user click the submit? So in your assignment, you are going to show your thank you page. So you are going to write in here the name of your page. In my case, I'm just going to write the URL for Belby College. So if my validation is correct, I'm going to go to Belby College. The other thing that we need to have for the form is a name. So I'm going to give it the name, my contact. And the reason why I'm giving it that name is because on the JavaScript code that I provide as an example, I'm saying here that this syntax is used in the name of the form. So the name of the form is my contact. And this is the value that is coming in here as my name of the form. Again, there are many, many ways to do these, but this is one way to do the validation. Another thing that you need to be very careful is the sensitivity of JavaScript. So make sure that my contact, the name of the form is exactly this one. So compare your uppercase letter and the lowercase letters so you are totally sure that they match. Finally, what we need to have is an event that is called the unsubmit event. So what is going to happen is as soon as the user click this submit button, when they click the submit, we are going to call the function validate form and return that value. So what we are going to do is just type return validate form. And this is JavaScript. So this is what we are um, going to define first. The other thing that I need to define on our um, HTML page is the location for the error messages. As you can see on the CSS, I provided a hashtag. It means that I need to have an ID, a location. And I'm going to do that by using a container. So I'm going to create a container div ID. And because of the sensitivity of JavaScript, I'm going to make sure that I'm using exactly that same name. I don't want to have any errors in here. And I'm going to close my div. So this is where I'm going to send my error messages. So I think I'm done with the CSS and the location. Now let's start modifying it a baseline for the validation. So the first thing that we want to do 
is to um, write the rule for the username. So let's go back to the description of the assignment. So the username says that it is required and should have a maximum of 12 characters. So let me just write this in here so I will remember the rule. So is required and should have a maximum of 12 characters. So this is how we are going to do the logic. So we have my contact and then the syntax is we have the name of the form then the name of the field. So we need to make sure that that field actually exists. So we need to scroll down and find the username. Here it is the username. So as you can notice this username and this username they don't match because this JavaScript code was created for another form. So let me just replace this and use username and here too, username. So what I want to do is just if uh, this value land is greater than 20, greater than 20, what we are going to have is the error message. So let me just write this error message and put it in here. Otherwise, we have a valid username. So let's take a look at the syntax of this code. If we go and see the variables, you can see that the valid username, we start by assuming that is incorrect. If the value sent by the user is less than 20, then it is correct. And then we are going to change that to true. Now, we said also that the field should be required. So how we are going to check that is as simple as using the operator or. So if this is less if this is greater than 20 or my contact username value is equal to null that means that the user didn't enter anything and we are expecting something or my contact username value is equal to an empty string it means that there is an error because we must have a value and if we have a value it must be less than 20. This is how we validate the username. Now let's see what we need to do and okay here I have an error because it should be less than 12 so my error message should, should be um, less than 12 characters. Now, what about um, the validation of the password? So let's check to our baseline. So again, I have my contact form and I have the user password. So I need to verify that that user password actually exists. Well, on this form, I have an ID password. So I need to change that and make, like, and make it consistent. So password value, password, value, password, value. And then for the password, the rule says that it's required and the maximum is seven characters. So let me go back here to my code, maximum seven characters. So I need to change my error message. So if, if there is an error, then we are going to build our error. Otherwise, we are going to say there is a valid password. At the end, actually, once we have finished validating the username and the password, we are just going to show any error messages in case we have any error messages. And we are going to return our variables. As you can see, I have my variable here, my variable here, and in each validation, I'm just either keeping false or if everything is fine, just changing it to true. 
when we return, we are just we are just sending the variables for our validation through the operator n. So if it, any of those are false, the whole expression is going to be false and the action won't be completed. The action is only follow through if all the variables that we return are actually true. So as you can also notice here, I have a warning. And this is because we should always compare not only values, but data types. So it's better to have the equal equal. So I'm going to just follow the advice from my JSPIN and I'm going to eliminate that, um, that warning. So now we are complete. So let's say, let's test this and run this with JavaScript and see if we don't have any errors. So let me modify this and modify this. So if I just click submit, I should get two errors. One for the username because it's required and another error for the password because it's also required. And I shouldn't go to Belby College because validate username is going to be false and validate user password is going to be false. So let's run this with Java script and see how it's working. As you can see, the username must be less than 12 and the password must be less than seven characters and it is required. So we can go ahead and modify this message and say, um, and it is required to make that consistent. Okay, so now I'm going to stop here. I'm going to save that as the first uh, version of the contact us form. I'm, I'm going to show you how to do a few more validations. All of them are going to follow the same pattern.